Right, buckle, we buckle down to a discussion this morning where Parliament has made the right decision to stop the takeover of Jomo Kenyatta International Airport by the laws making Kenya Airways. The whole deal is shrouded in mystery and sound suspect. Recent revelations have just confirmed our fears. The deal is being fronted and pushed by individuals or groups outside the orbit of the airport authority, raising questions about their motive. This, last week, Kenya Airports Authority Managing Director Joni Anderson categorically told Parliament's Public Investment Committee that the organization was never involved in the transaction. Neither did it originate the idea, nor was it ever consulted. Rather, the authority was railroaded into the transaction. To be sure, Mr. Anderson stated the authority was instructed by Principal Secretaries Paul Maringa and Esther Coimet to enter into the discussion with Kenya Airways with the rider that the decision had been made by higher authorities. Who is this higher authority? That's a probing question. Neither was KAA team given any written communication from the cabinet to validate the directive. This is a stinker. First, KAA is a public entity with an independent board. If a decision is to be made on its ownership and operation, there must be a proper process that involves even parliamentary approval. Asking KAA to hand over management of the airport to another entity, in this case Kenya Airways, is a major decision that cannot be made casually. Airports are strategic assets and must be jealously guarded. Thus, the cabinet cannot purportedly issue directive of the takeover without following the correct procedure. Secondly, even if by chance the decision was to be made, Kenya Airways does not have the capacity and resources to manage airports. Kenya Airways has perennially been making losses. It went into a misguided ex expansion plan that saw it procure aircraft it did not need and entered into runs that did not make economic sense. The fuel pricing model it adopted as well as ticket costing were poorly crafted and the result has been high operational costs and reduced passengers uptake. Simply put, it is a struggling entity. And do we trust to hand over the management of Kenya Airport Authority to Kenya Airways? That is a probing question. And who is this high authority that the principals are pointing towards? Why was the board of Kenya Airports Authority not really consulted? Uh, can we also look keenly and see what is the underlying or the under and the handings that is actually involved in this particular case that we are just about to discuss with our panelists this morning. Allow me to introduce to you this morning our panelist. We have with us Richard Onyonka, who is a member of parliament of Akitoto Churches South. Also, we do have with us Dr. Shemo Chodo, who is a global leader of Kenya, who is a leader of Kenya Diaspora Alliance. Also, we do have with us as well Senator Congo Mugini, who is a senator of Nyamira. We eagerly wait for Pogisio to join us much, much later in the course of the program. Also, General Mark Kioni has sent his uh, regrets he cannot be with us this morning. Right, let's just continue with this particular story, uh, which is developing with new revelations. And we want to see, uh, when they talk about higher authorities that are shoehorning the management of, of the Kenya Airports Authority, who is this high authority? Dr. Shema Chwoda. Um, morning, Debal. Uh, allow me to give a rare compliment to Parliament for uh, having put a stop to, to this uh, old chariot of KQ purporting or wishing to come in to manage the airports without going due process, mm -hmm. in my view. Uh, what's clear, and, and some of us who are concerned about uh, uh, when we try to bring foreign managers you know, as if we don't have Kenyans, Kenyan professionals and managers who are capable of running our assets. I, I'm, I am among those who always wonders because outside you find there are Kenyans who run even bigger assets very successful in other countries. And then I keep asking, what is it that, uh, why are we so obsessed with, with foreign labor? I think clearly the new management at KQ should just throw in the towel and tell Kenyans they are not able they're not capable to turn around this company. For me, that's the message I'm getting, that they have, they have failed. They were being brought in as a dream team, mm -hmm. but clearly they are failing. If what the only thing they can think of is to, to delve into assets and services offered by Kenya Airports Authority, mm -hmm. then, of course, I don't see the dream solution they are bringing on the table. I must also compliment the KA CEO 
for having been forthright. Uh, ordinarily, um, uh, a CEO would have uh, wound his tail and come out to say we were part of this. But I think the fact that he's being sincere to say, look, we were not involved in this, um, I think is clearly understandable. Thirdly, I think I want to encourage the chair of KA board to step aside because he seems to be conflicted. A bank that he leads is supported to have interest in this transaction. So clearly, that's a case of conflict of interest. As somebody that's of high integrity that I respect a lot, I think he shouldn't allow his name to be soiled in this transaction. But I think the right thing to have done is to stop this transaction because it defeats all logic. Why KQ, which is not in the business of running airports, if it has failed to manage its fleet well, and somebody needs to get down into the problem at KQ. The last time, I think, there was a loss of 23 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever come out to explain to Kenyans, that's not pocket change. Where did this money go? Each time, KQ seems to run into losses. And yet it charges very high uh, flight uh, fare fares. And you start wondering, why are they making losses? So I think the problem as KQ, as, at KQ is much bigger than what we are being told. All right. Uh, of course, they've showcased before that they cannot really... Uh, some of the decisions they made were wrong-headed uh, as far as the costing of the, the prices were, was concerned, the hedging of the fuel as well. And now taking over uh, KAA, managing it, and they've actually failed dismally with managing Kenya Airways itself. You think this was a right move in the first place? And also, Shea Mochoda is loading the uh, parliamentarians for actually stopping this particular takeover. Yeah, I, I think I fully agree with uh, Ochoa that uh, uh, for once, uh, Parliament has done what it's supposed to do, right. and that is to check any excesses of the executive and where there could be attempts to uh, abuse office. And uh, that's how it should be. And I hope uh, yeah. we will stand firm sure. in this. Now, Dibal, I, I want to say that uh, the problems of KQ, as has been ably put by my friend, uh, Dr. Chemo Chodo, begins with the management. You remember the, the issue of uh, uh, fuel is, is a decision that was speculative. You're trying to uh, speculate the, the, the prices for the next two years or so. And, and that, I think, in itself made KQ to go into so many losses. But I think looking at the bigger picture, uh, Dibal, we, we all take pride in the fact that uh, we are one of the few countries in the region that own uh, an airline and, and one that is really uh, uh, a pride of Africa, so to speak, because it flies to so many destinations around Africa. Mm -hmm. And as a person, I wouldn't w want to see uh, KQ go under. So I think as a country, as a government, we must put all efforts uh, to ensure that Kenya Airways remains up in the sky. But then, whatever we want to do, it must be done in a manner that uh, doesn't leave an egg in our face. I think what I would propose myself is that it's good for the government to attempt to bail out KQ, but we should not do it in a manner that raises speculations more than giving us answers. I mean, why? Why should it be the route that you want to kill an organization like Kenya Airways or uh, Kenya Airports Authority that is fairly profitable and hand it over to an organization that has clearly shown that in terms of management all you can expect are, are losses. I think that's not the way to, to do it. Then number two, and which is a bigger issue, is that there are questions which are being raised on issues surrounding conflict of interest. And I think that's why the members of parliament have put a stop to this and said, even if we want to undertake a process of rescuing KQ, mm -hmm. let it be done above board. Mm -hmm. Number two, I've, I've not seen either in the Constitution or in our laws yes. any animal called uh, an higher office. I mean, if you have an entity that is supported by statutes, you have an organization like KQ that should run independently. Mm -hmm. Who is this animal called I office? In, in a situation where we have the new Constitution, which uh, talks of transparency, which talks of access to information to the public. Nobody should attempt to put this animal called I office on the table. Ev everything that is being done between Kenya Airways and KQ should be done in a transparent <laughs> manner, mm -hmm. and nobody should try to um, twist the board of Kenya Airports Authority or the management board of Kenya Airways. And I think it's a pity that uh, 
the borrowing of Kenya Airways has been heavy. I, I think I'm told the banks hold uh, close to 38% mm. in, in, in terms of the loans that they have advanced to KQ. Mm. So what we should do is do, have a process that will increase maybe the shareholding of the government from what we have current, which is 48%. <coughs> but try to um, twist Kenya Airports Authority to see uh, the management of our airports to Kenya Airways. I don't think that is something that's accept acceptable to, to Kenyans. All right, cool. Actually, what was a splash on the front page of uh, the star could be the revelation of the, of, the, of the high office that we're talking about, if we may pick your brains also, Richard Onyonka, <coughs> looking uh, at that particular splash. Thank you, Dibal. I, I would like to uh, support what my colleagues have said. This is a case where uh, it actually makes Kenyans wonder whether the executive, and in this case, whether the President Uhuru Kenyatta is actually serious about this war on corruption. The truth is, number one, what happens when you want to sell, lease, or give away a national asset? First, the law says you must have public hearings. All right. Secondly, that whole exercise has to be brought to the parliamentary, parliamentary Committee on Transport, which then must sit and it must go to the Senate so that this matter is interrogated, it is discussed, and the members of these two parliamentary committees, and indeed the two parliaments, uh, basically the Senate and the National Assembly, to actually sit and debate and discuss this matter. That didn't happen. Number two, the KAA, Kenya Airports Authority, has been a success story. In fact, it's one of the parastatals today, if you were to go back and do the audit on the resources and the, the money which they may have in, in, their, uh, in, their, in their accounts, you'll find that KAA is actually the most liquid of the parastatals because it receives revenue, and they have reasonably um, mm -hmm. maintained and kept the Kenya Airports Authority running successfully. Now, how do you match this with KQ? Up to now, we don't know who actually owns KQ. If you listen to the stories that are coming out, even in Parliament, and, and for me, I would actually wish that the, the Transport Committee goes in further to investigate who owns KQ, and not KQ, even the brand, KQ, the aeroplanes which Titus Naikuni left behind. You remember the story about there was some small company which were registered, uh, outside the country, uh, Cayman Islands and everywhere, and these companies, in fact, are the ones who brought the aeroplanes, which then KQ leased from these companies, and that is why KQ will never make any profits. Who are actually the owners of KQ? So these, I think, for me, are sure. issues that members of parliament and members of the Senate need to be brave enough so that we start interrogating what has been going on. KQ has been swallowing billions and billions of shillings every year for the last 10 years. Uh, the 10th parliament, 11th parliament, and now we are actually, we've never come up clearly, mm -hmm. Dibal, mm -hmm. to know who the owners of KQ are. And these owners of KQ, and when you get this statement, if it is true that this came up from high above, and you see the story that is in the star, that the, the takeover is actually linked to the Kenyatta family, this would be a slap in the face of President Uhuru Kenyatta saying that he's fighting corruption. The truth is we now want transparency in this country. The truth is we, Kenyans are sick and tired of every single day corruption, uh, cases of billions of shillings being stolen, whether it's the medical industry, billions are being stolen, whether it is the transport industry, billions are being stolen. Look at KQ, look at SGR. If it is in agriculture, billions are being stolen. If it is in water, billions are being stolen. This has to stop somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I really recommend commend my colleagues in, in Parliament who stopped this deal. And we will stay vigilant and we will make sure that this will not continue for the simple reason that Kenyans are sick and tired of all these underhand deals which are negotiated, discussed under the table by these big people, and therefore we are not supposed to say anything about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, we've seen uh, previously, even uh, when they had the open sky policy, uh, when they're given the, the projection from 2011 about Nairobi being the, the, the regional hub, uh, that also they, they did follow the, the report or the advice of Deloitte then. 
if there are people who cannot really sit, this is management of a KQ, do you think then uh, you wonder what sort of negotiation is? And last time I think we were talking about how negotiations in this country, they're done. Mm. And we actually delve deeper. This could be one of the negotiations also uh, that is really, really, uh, you know, a stinker for, for this country as well. Pogiso was joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. First of all, I, this is a matter which is very much uh, close to my heart. It's uh, having, having been in the aviation um, industry for the last five years or so, with KCA, which is a regulator actually, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it, it is very interesting to note that uh, everybody seems to read in the right direction, uh, that KQ and, and, and KAA have a good relationship, but one should not, should not swallow the other. And, and I think that I'd, I'd like to support the, uh, the members of parliament who have, uh, the committee that has gone ahead to deal with this matter. Because uh, these models are many in the world, but they're not very many successful models of airlines running airports. Uh, they're not very many. And, um, and, and of course, it, it gives you time to think, why would anybody want to do and push very hard for that? I think, I think the most important thing for me was, as we were working, was to see how KAA would actually be profitable and KAA would then be able to improve all the facilities which are there and make it comfortable for KQ. Make KQ have a, you know, their own hub, let them have their own terminal if they want to. Mm -hmm. but, but the business of, uh, of KQ trying to own, that model has, has failed elsewhere in the world. It's not a model that works, uh, especially in democratic places and, 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 and capital, capital, let's say prop, uh, money, uh, uh, market economies mm -hmm. uh, or, or areas where liberal, the, the, the economy has been liberalized, it's very difficult. And I like the question that was asked by, 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 by Onyonka. Who owns KQ? How much of that ownership is really Kenyan? Uh, and so that a whole 100% Kenyan asset mm -hmm. called KAA to be swallowed by an by asset which is, not, which is not necessarily owned by Kenyans. So those questions are there. Uh, it's much definitely of something uh, fishy. Uh, but it's the whole thing is trying to move things under the radar, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, apparently, I'm glad for Kenyans who actually raise the, the who, who raise these things in the media, who raise these things in the, uh, the, the in the political space, so that nobody just rushes through these things in the radar. And you know, it's so dangerous, Debal, in in a situation where we have um, uh, uh, what you call the handshake. Now, mm -hmm. this this is actually the flop side of the handshake. Mm. The handshake is very good, but sometimes when the handshake <laughs> agrees on <laughs> everything, mm. <laughs> uh, things like this can simply pass through right. without the radar, without being caught. And, and I, I think that I should definitely ask the people, uh, the architects of the handshake, please, there are certain things which you just have to question each mm -hmm. other on and say, hey, this one, I think we can, this one we can debate a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't just rush through because now it's become like a tyranny of numbers has come back to the house. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not good necessarily for democracy. Uh, we would like the handshake to do what the handshake has done, just stabilize the economy, stabilize the country, the political temperatures, mm -hmm. but not necessarily to have to begin to, 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 to agree on everything that goes. Uh, in this case, by the way, it's very important that Kenyans uh, slow down on this deal, uh, if not stop it completely. All right. Yeah. We want to take a short break, but also to show you this editorial cartoon that uh, Victor has drawn in light of the KQ KA takeover. Secret takeover bid made public. Right, where we have the under things there, we can see the, uh, the, the pants of, uh, this is a, uh, right, okay. I thought uh, this is dirty linens. Let me not continue. People are taking breakfast this morning. Yeah. The other things are there. So this is what we are discussing. The other things are on the KQ and uh, KAA takeover. We take a short break right now. When we circle back, we continue. Welcome back. You're watching. This is a point here on AM Live and we continue with a conversation on the debate that is right now in the public domain, that is the KQ KAA takeover. And before we took a short break, we had this editorial cartoon that we were looking at and trying to decipher it to see what uh, Victor has drawn for us. Secret takeover bid made public, right? This is where I give my analysts an handy opportunity to also weigh in on what they're seeing. Shame much water. Uh, the ball, uh, it's, it's very unfortunate to see a cartoon like that, uh, but rather sadly, 
that seems to be the situation on the ground. Because I can see an aircraft there that uh, the tires seem to be punctured. Uh, so it's largely grounded and there are a lot of uh, dirty linens that are on display. And uh, I, initially I was wondering whether that's a KAF flag, but it looks like a post, a signpost that has been hit by KQ, as it were. Uh, the ball, it's very sad as we are talking. We are, it's on public, in public domain that uh, three aircrafts, major KQ aircrafts, are down for no very good reasons. Two of them. I think uh, uh, collided at the airport, we are told. Nobody has explained what happened. Because to have two aircrafts collide, uh, thank God there were no major casualties. In. It could have been worse. For an airline that has reached the stage where we are having direct flights to New York, that kind of recklessness without being explained is un uh, unacceptable. Probably the same month, we also were informed of this uh, Dreamliner which um, which had to do uh, uh, emergency landing in Dar es Salaam while flying down south. Again, that seems to be grounded. Um, I think it may take a little while to be fixed. And in a situation where we are being told that most of the aircrafts that uh, the airline has don't belong to it, and three are already grounded, there clearly is a crisis at KQ which we need to find a solution to. I wanted to concur with Mwishimua Omogeni that, uh, look, this is a major national asset and pride. I was just being reminded of something that I saw in uh, uh, South Sudan when independence came. You know, the joy that you have. I am told I wasn't there when KQ got its first aircraft. But it was that uh, as cut, uh, uh, that 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 moment when you know Kenyans were so excited to receive their first aircraft. But now what we are so obviously KQ is our meant to be our national pride and the pride of Africa for that matter. So obviously we need to find a way to get it back on track. But the things we are hearing in this really don't smell good. Maybe the business model of KQ is not right because something doesn't just tally. Uh, who owns the aircraft, that needs to be found out. Can we find a viable way? Because the, business, the airline business needs to be making profit. Ethiopian Airlines has been making profit forever, and yet Ethiopia is uh, not one of the countries best known for um, free market economy. And yet how come that uh, despite the upheavals we have had in Ethiopia, regime come in and goes, but ET has always been solid. Why can't we be solid? I wouldn't want to believe that we don't have as good, if not better, managers to run KQ. So obviously, let's de uh, disengage the politics from KQ running as an, a viable economic business. But it's also, I know people have said, look, other countries, the airlines run the airports. But some, many of those instances, you find that the, 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 those, those airlines are public assets. KQ. I'm not even sure how much f fraction now. It's certainly government. Public assets is minority. The majority is a private outfit. Thank you. So it's really not, although we call it national carrier, it's uh, really a private uh, uh, corporation uh, to the extent that the majority shareholding is uh, private. So in this regard, let's find a solution and let's find it very quickly so that the assets of KQ doesn't degenerate. Right. Let's hear from Okongo Mogini just uh, <laughs> looking at that in the cartoon again. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, looking at some of the secrets that are coming to the fore, maybe you could weigh in. First of all, I think uh, you alluded to uh, Dr. Shemo Chodo that the conflict of interest right. that is embroiled in this, and I think also this cartoon is highlighting this particular conflict of interest that we're talking about. First of all, the, the chair of uh, KAA right now is Isaac Owundo, sure. who interestingly enough also is the CEO of the CBA, the, K the Commercial Bank, Bank of Africa. Africa. Yeah. And w I'm given to understand as, as well that Commercial Bank of Africa is owned by KQ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are privy to it. Maybe Okongo Morgan, you can tell us. So we can see why is the chairman uh, trying to take over KQ. And they've not really, as, as now the CEO of CBA Africa, this is a conflict of interest that we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, where maybe the Kenyatta family is involved because Kenyatta family also has a large uh, shareholdings of, with, with, with the Commercial Bank of Africa as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think first from the cartoon, I don't know that my interpretation is right, but uh, it seems like 
some romantic relationship between <laughs> Kenya <laughs> and, and Kenya Airports Authority that was meant to be secretive. Let's have a to, yes. <laughs> but uh, suddenly it's, it's now become open. Yeah. And, uh, or even mm -hmm. the linen has now been put out there. So it's, it, you know, it, it brings out the issue of what we said earlier, that this was meant to be a fairly hidden deal that was not meant to come to the public. But now it's come to the public and it is shaming everybody there. So the, the relationship has been blown. It's now uh, in public domain, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, the, the linen is out there. It, it leaves an egg to the, the, the two love birds there. But Kenya, so I think Kenya Airports Authority also is setting their sights higher. Yeah, so then they're, they're looking above the under things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I Continue. think it's it's sad. Uh, you know, th th we shouldn't see a cartoon like this on public entities. You know, Mushimi Onyonka is a very critical issue that even if we want and we all agree that we really don't want to see Ke kenya airways uh, leave the skies we want to see it uh, uh, out there but i think the most important thing is that we need a process that is above board mm. we, we don't want to a process that is shrouded in some mystery uh, where deals are being cut under the table this should be a deal that is on the table critically the public should fully be informed of uh, each each uh, step being taken, there should be adequate, and I emphasize, adequate public participation and consultation. And of course, the oversight of uh, our National Assembly and the Senate must be there. We must have our, our, our input. And then, critically, you know, Dibar, this issue of conflict of interest, I mean, we all know, Dibar, that if you find yourself in a situation where you are conflicted, mm -hmm. then you, you, you really should step aside. You should not put yourself in a situation sure. where you are pushing an agenda of an organization that you have a stake. In this case, I am told uh, the indebtedness of KQ is to the tune of 38% uh, of its total shareholding. And a large uh, part of that debt is owed to CBA. And as you know, Awondo is the CEO of CBA. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, he is the chair of Kenya Airports Authority. Seriously, that is a very clear conflict of interest. And the, 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 the best thing you should do so that he remains a decent man, as we have always known him to be, right. he should choose which side of his bread is buttered. If he wants to protect his position as CEO of CBA, let him tender resignation from the chairmanship of Kenya Airports Authority. Right. We have somebody else who is independent, who is not looking at the interest of recovering the debt that is owed by Kenya Airways to CBA. Uh, we agree as a, an entity they need to protect their interests, but you cannot have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You cannot be saying you are here. The first and foremost, supposed to protect the public entity called Air Kenya Airports Authority. Mm -hmm. On the other side, as a CEO, you're also supposed to make sure that uh, the debt that is owed mm -hmm. is secured. <laughs> Isn't that a conflict? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the decent thing to do and I want to urge my good friend uh, uh, Isaac to consider and take one side. He should not be on, on, <coughs> on both sides. And uh, then finally, uh, there is a problem in this country that uh, people just wake up and uh, say this is a solution to a problem that is really critical. Sure. And, and as uh, Mushmi Nyonka has put it, the, the problems that are bedeviling Kenya Airways arises from strategic uh, decisions that were made but which were not in the best interest of that organization. And I want us to seize this moment and go deeper into some of these issues, like the issue of ownership uh, that Mushimu has, has raised. I mean, most Kenyans, if you talk to them, they will tell you Kenya has bought new airplanes, right. the Embraers, the Dreamliners. But now there's something that is coming <coughs> to the fore this morning, right. that somebody, some entities, some people created companies, bought the the aircrafts and then lease them to KQ. Now, you not solve the problem that is facing KQ if, if you just say you want to pump in money without going deeper into the problems. So it seems that uh, there are people who may have urged a plan some times ago to rip off Kenya Airways. And I think that's, that's what we should treat. That is the problem that we should look at, not this issue of saying we have a, a fat cow called KAA. Yeah. Hey, let's now pass it over to Kenya Airways to be milked. Right. That's not the, the solution. So even if we bring out uh, the, the experts uh, from, you know, uh, from without the country, 
uh, International, of course, the experts who are here right now mm. uh, to manage KQ as it is right now. That is just a band-aid solution. Mm. The yes. rot is actually within. Yes, we sure. know with, the, with people who own KQ, the leasing, the Operation uh, Mawingu project that was mooted up to now, is it really flying? Mm -hmm. uh, that could be the question as I, well. I, Dibal, I'll, I'll tell you that um, uh, without <coughs> any fear of, of contradiction, Kenya Airways was deliberately, uh, skillfully, and carefully restructured about 10 years ago to actually permanently make a loss. The reason is that all the aircraft that are leased from wherever they've been leased, actually they've been released by companies that have been registered in the Cayman Islands, in the Seychelles, and all these tax haven uh, outfits. Those companies are owned by Kenyans, and those companies are actually the flag um, money ciphering, uh, siphoning um, entities which then were brought into Kenya when Embraer was buying the planes from Australia, I mean, when KQ was buying, was quote unquote buying and leasing mm -hmm. the aeroplanes from Brazil, the aeroplanes were actually brought under the courtesy of these outfits. When we are leasing the Dreamliners, it is not KQ mm -hmm. that is directly leasing these Dreamliners directly from Boeing. There is a third party in between that has been doing this. So what is happening is every single transaction that has taken place with KQ in the last 10 years, including if you remember, you know Kenyans have very short memories. If you remember when there was an audit done and they were showing how a packet of juice from Del Monte which was actually costing an equivalent of about 3,000 shillings per, 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 per liter. Incredibly. And yet out here in the market, a packet of juice at that time was about 150 shillings. So what, you, what happened out of that, KQ then started cutting. They cut the salaries of the pilots. They cut the salaries of the flight passers. They cut the prices of our engineers who are actually the aeronautic engineering who are servicing these vehicles. No wonder the planes are, are, are banging against each other in the, in the hangars at the airport. <laughs> and then what happened? All our best qualified pilots, all our engineers, all our flight passers have gone to Qatari Airlines, have gone to Emirates, have gone to all these other air, air, airlines, and they are left basically KQ as a shell. The last issue I wanted to raise is this. Under Chapter 6, how did Awondo get cleared to be the chairman of KAA? And yet he was the chairman of Commercial Bank of Africa. CEO, CEO, sorry, the CEO. I think we, in Parliament, our Parliament, our leadership, must begin, we must begin to ask ourselves these questions about public accountability. And indeed, for me and many other Kenyans out there, there are certain things that we feel that Kenya has surpassed. There are, some, there are certain deals that in this country should not take place. We have certain th things which are happening, and when you look, you just shake up your head. Because they keep repeating themselves, they are done by the same people, these shady deals are managed by the same cartel and the same clique. You look at, you don't even know where to start. When you look at one sector, you find that the same players are reflected on the second sector. So you are like, where are we going to start and where are we going to stop? Let's hear from Pogisio. Uh, you as a former chair of K KCA as well, uh, you had a close interaction with KA. Uh, we know, f looking at uh, the... the their bottom line. What can we say about the healthiness of their financial status of KA? Do they need a takeover, <coughs> as it were? <laughs> but no, it's not. It's not that KA doesn't need any takeover. In fact, KA is a very strong entity, a very financially sound entity. As most of you will remember that KA and KCA were one entity at some point. And, uh, and, and so just the division, we just managed to get uh, uh, them split recently. And so KCA became the regulator, and I'm surprised that KCA would be quiet. KCA should be able to say something about this, this whole thing, because the regulator must, must work in the, the best view. interest yes. Yes. of the aviation industry yes. in this country, to put the aviation entry, uh, industry in the competitive fast lane. That, that should be the aim of KCA. And KCA, then when we split with KCA, we actually, under my own watch, moved the amendments in the act to allow for them to collect the, the passenger tax. 
And that, that means they collect, for every passenger, they collect some amount of money. Actually, it's quite, yes. quite a good amount of money. And that then goes to KAA for purposes of developing and growing the, the uh, facilities. And a smaller percentage of that was agreed that would go to the regulator to allow the regulator to be able to do all this work that it does. And so, so I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to a time when we can hear from the regulator whether this is the best model uh, that has ever uh, that can support K. We, I know, of course, as a former chairman, that it's not, it's, it cannot be sustained. It's unsustainable. In what, any what, case, why, why would we, why would KA want? That means KC. I mean, why would Kenya Airways? want to run the airports? I mean, that's yeah. the question is, uh, yeah. don't they have their hands full yeah. already with, <laughs> with, with aircrafts? Uh, and the restructuring. And, and, and the restructuring. Uh, yes. The aircraft and to come, right now. Yeah, <coughs> trying to come out of this uh, uh, hole which they are in. So if, 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 if we were to be ask yourself, if you're not doing very well where you are, why are you taking on more right. responsibility? You bet. And I, th and I think that that is, uh, and because of what? Okay, tell me. <coughs> because of what? The reason why Kenyans, I think, need to, to face the challenge is that even to find people to head these organizations, KAA, huh. KQ, that we must go and find people outside of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we, we find all these things being very, sometimes very disturbing. Tell but, me. Yeah, yeah be because first of all also within the management of uh, KAA, I don't know if you're privy to this, uh, are they supposed to contract or, or maybe to outsource also the, the people who manage the parking within uh, the Kenya Airports Authority? Because mm -hmm. I think Kenya Airports Authority used to do them, mm -hmm. I mean to do that themselves, and I think that is a very huge resource uh, 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 you know, uh, source of revenue, actually, I should say, for KAA in the first place. Look at what is happening at the Wilson Airport. Mm. It is Isumu not even, Airport, yeah, Mombasa Airport. Mombasa Airport. Nairobi. This, these are things that we need to question. Why are they being outsourced? And this is, has been the sole, you know, sole entity, I should say, of KAA. Uh, but just before he weighs in yeah. on that one, I yes. would just say that uh, even if outsourcing is allowed, okay, I mean, for ease of work. But what, can they maintain a particular standard? Yes. But that, that's more important. They keep a particular standard where you can, it's so shoddy in some places and, and very successful in others. So I just like for KAA to say when you outsource, and that's where corruption comes in. To whom do you outsource? If we were to track down who are these people who are getting outsourced this works, you would wonder, you would find therein. Yes. Mm. That the, 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 the corruption the, issues. Yes, the corruption issues. Yes. But for me, Dibal, the issue, I totally agree with uh, what Senator has just said. Um, if you look at the um, companies that are actually running the parking spaces, for example, yes, um, I would wish and I would hope that the transport committee and the, indeed the auditor general, we now need to start interrogating the amount of money, for example, that the people running these airports and the people collecting the revenue, yes, uh, how much is the government making? and how much is this company that has been outsourced it's making. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, the truth is that we've, we've always got these very short memories as Kenyans. At one time, you remember, Dibal, there was a big scandal about this uh, parking company which has been running the parking spaces at the airports, whether yes. it's in Nairobi, Mombasa, or Kisumu. And there was a big hula balloo about it. And that, the reason for that is that there are tons and tons, there's tons of money that is being made out of that park, parking space mm -hmm. and its management system. The question is, what does the government make out of that? All right. I would love to know what the transport committee says. I would like to know what the auditor general says. And I would like to know what, in general terms, the director general of KCA uh, and the director general and the chairman and, and most probably the, the CEO of Kenya Airports Authority, I, we, would, we need to know what revenue the government makes out of everything that is run out of these airports, and, and including uh, um, doing an audit exactly so that we know what is happening at KQ, who owns KQ, which aeroplanes are we leased, how many do we have. We need to know what our pilots are earning, comparable to the international best practices. We need to know uh, why, if you look, and, and I'm really humbled to raise this issue, look at our uh, air hostesses, or they are called flight passers. They never look the way they used to look. Most of them look extremely tired. And when you f do inquiries, the poor uh, gentlemen and ladies who work have no time to rest. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, there was a time when I had a brother who was a pilot at KQ. He told me the reason why he resigned early from KQ is because he would fly for 18 hours straight on mm -hmm. to the point where he reached a stage where he was having to start uh, flight uh, fright. Yeah. He mm -hmm. was getting worried that he may not be able to carry an aeroplane from here to Douala. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that the committees of parliament need to start investigating. We must be able to go to the bottom of all things so that at least uh, we are able to, to check the balances of the checks and balances within the executive so that we are able to know what is happening within that sector so that even the public another thing Dibal and this is related don't you think we are having too many small aircraft accidents in this country mm -hmm. yeah something is, something is, is not right we are having too many of these small aer aeroplanes which are falling off the sky is it because of the regulations is it because of the regulator is it because of the engineers who have left who are not able to service these, these um, aeroplanes, we need to have the stakeholders to come to Parliament and tell the Transport Committee and indeed to tell the Senate whether we are actually solid enough, whether we are managing the sector well, and whether anybody who comes here and is taking a flight is comfortable and confident that he will reach or she will reach where she's going. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the ball, I, I see two major problems we face as a country. One is uh, where we just come out of the blues with projects that have not been very well thought out, where professionals have not been consulted, and we purport just to implement. And there are many. This KQ managing airports is just one of them. But secondly, it's lack of merit. Meritocracy was long thrown out. Mm. We have very good professionals. Whether it's pilots, I remember at one point, the UN itself, when uh, it was going in to uh, get hold of Saddam, uh, many would be surprised that a, a Kenyan, probably one of the, our very first aeronautics engineers who has now retired, led that team that was sent to, to do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. Of course, they went and didn't find uh, weapons of mass destruction, but that story for another day. But I remember in 2005, the, the ball, once traveling to Doha, when I was working for the government of Rwanda as a senior officer, I get to the airport in Doha, when I was coming back home, and then I see black faces on the counters. And as I present my documents, one tells me Abari Mweshimiwa. He notices I'm taken a little aback because I didn't expect there to be a Kenyan. He goes ahead and says, by the way, the 10 or so of us you see as in Kenya. 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 Yeah. You know, I felt so proud. I was saying, if this was in Dubai, I would understand. Mm -hmm. So many Kenyans go to Dubai. Mm -hmm. But this is Doha, like in, then it was the middle of nowhere. And if this was KQ counters, I would have said, I would have understood. But this was Emirates. Now, I'm just using that example to show the kind of expertise we have global. I remember there was a time, even in Fort Worth Airport in Texas, a senior airport manager, director, was Kenyan, and there have been a number over the years. Now, if our people are doing so well in even bigger airports, mm -hmm. is it that we can't manage our assets? It goes back to, 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 to merit. I, my, my suggestion going forward in this matter, the ball, it's not that we cannot get Kenyans who can fix the problem as KQ. The airline aviation industry is a lucrative sector. We should be making money. Can we just de-engage? De de and I want to encourage the executive. Let's use this as an example to confirm to Kenyans we are genuine about fighting corrupt so that things are done the right way. Let's get professionals so that whether it's the pilots or the hostesses, the crews and all, we can get a solution so that there's a win-win. Everybody's happy, share all the values Thank there. You. Uh, so, my premise, the ball is we can fix this problem, but then the vested interest must step aside and then we allow professionalism to take root. And let, let's have a good mod business model for KQ that would make it profitable. It's doable. Thank you. Uh, let's hear from Congo Mogini. I think also you, you, you've raised a lot of issues uh, with the failed projects. We can discuss another project that uh, is bound to be. A failing or yeah it is actually failed so far as right. far as uh, the figures are, are concerned but Okongo Mugini on the issue of uh, KQ and uh, the issue also of uh, history uh, as he was talking about accidents which are happening nowadays we've never also heard from KQ as far as uh, the, the Dwala Axe tragedy was concerned with the KQ 547 how many years and I think uh, maybe also Pogis, you can tell us, because now I think this is within the remit of Kenya Civil Aviation Authority as far as reporting is concerned, an air crash investigations. 
how many years down the line? We've never had any, and I think this should also fall squarely on, on the uh, transport committee in parliament mm. to yes. make Kenyans there. Yes. How many lives were lost? Mm. Over 200 lives were lost. Mm. Yet up to this day, we've never gotten any report. When, you, when, when you're the chairman, uh, let, let, let uh, Pogisho answer because uh, yeah. did anything about this particular report uh, came to your table? Have you been following this? Where is the report? Kenyans need to know. Families that are deceased also, uh, they need to know. I think the, one of the things that we, we as a parliament now must also look at is how much influence the ministries have on parastatals. And, uh, and, and I think uh, some of these parastatals are supposed to be left more independent Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're not getting that independence. What has happened is that the, the, the aircraft incident or accident investigating body has, done, has not been moved to K, KCAA. This is, this, is, this is actually domiciled in the Ministry what, uh, the of Transport, the investigation uh, uh, of, of accidents. Uh, yes. but, but and, you think and reports and reports. Even reports? Yes, of course. And, and, and so, so and, and recently also we had a new board which were appointed. I think those are, those are, the, those are different uh, wing of the is it the air crash investigation team that was yes. uh, was put up by the transport uh, minister? Exactly. So, uh, so the ministry and, uh, is, is, has a very strong grip on aviation industry and, and all these things we are talking about. If, if, but as you track back, including the takeover of, of, of KAA and, uh, and, and, and all the in, uh, investigations and so on, we, we need the, the members of parliament and parliamentarians need to, and the committee needs to go and start this probe at the ministries. Because that's, those people have a very, very heavy, but well, I'll tell you one, one thing for sure, who appoints the chairman or, or the board members, it's still mm -hmm. the ministry. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, in, if, if you are appointed at this point, in fact, uh, the, the, um, the amendment to the KCA Act that was made so that we could get direct flight to the US was supposed to strengthen that position so that it is not subject to any harassment uh, by anybody in the ministries and so on, so that then that person can make the decisions that they want to make. That should be the same thing with, uh, with KAA. It should strengthen them and give them some measure of independence so that they do not have to uh, tremble at their knees right. when, when, when they have to make a decision. Uh, and, but there's still so much of that interference going on. And, I, and that's where actually I think I want to throw the ball back to the, to the, to the committee on that. So as it is, we don't know what, uh, where that report is. Is it with, with the ministry? ministry. Is it with the yeah, ministry? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and then when are they... Uh, and it's if the ministry is now connected to their own time when they want to release it and, okay. and when it's favorable. Yes. Did you find uh, it uh, very <coughs> interesting that when we have um, uh, air crash or air crashes in this country, it's not the face of Kenya Civil Aviation Authority first that we see on the scene. It is actually the National uh, Disaster Management Authority. And that this yeah. is a Pierce uh, Maasai that we'll actually see yeah. on the face. Do you think there's something really wrong with that uh, as far as even securing, you know, the whole scene is concerned? It should be actually the experts from the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Sure. When we had a f uh, fly sucks going down at Aberdeers, right. we can see the face of uh, you know, Pierce. He does a good work. But we cannot be just being when it, uh, the face of Pierce when it is uh, of famine, it is air crash. Uh, air crashes that have happened in the country. I think even the transport committee, you need now to actually look keenly on this as well. Mm. Who should be the face? Right. Yes. And where yes. are these reports? Because we've never had uh, the public being given these reports, beginning with the dollar report, where we had yeah. over 200 uh, passengers who lost their lives. Lost their lives. Mm. Of course, yeah. I, fully, I fully agree and I concur with you mm. now, that uh, there are more questions than answers yeah. in some of these accidents that. Uh, Kenya always has experience. But on the other hand, you know, as, as a patriotic Kenyan, uh, I am here also to state that uh, KQ is one of the safest flights uh, really to, to, to fly in. Uh, the local um, flights, Mombasa, Kisumu, Nairobi, in our history, we have never had any accident involving uh, Kenya Airways. So we should not scare, you know, right. Kenyans who are watching, uh, then they start running away from Kenya Airways. <laughs> Uh, I think the, pro the major problem with KQ, as we have uh, discussed this morning, revolves around the, the, the management issues mm -hmm. and, and, and the cartels who may want to benefit from the problems that are uh, facing that airline. And I think going forward, Bal, today we are really putting the Kenya Airports Authority management on the spot, that they need to understand that they are an independent parastato and that they should make decisions that are in the best national interest of us Kenyans, not on the best interest of some business uh, people. And uh, 
three, the critical issue that we have raised this morning, uh, that we, as Kenyans, we need answers, is issues surrounding conflict of interest. Because we are not going to undo this process in a professional manner if we have people sitting on both sides and who are clearly conflicted. So I think uh, I'm not in the transport committee, but as Senate and as National Assembly, that's one issue that we must tackle and uh, you know do some cleanup going forward so that we don't have people running affairs of public entities purely for uh, personal benefit. Th that is not uh, a decent yeah. way of doing things and, and I think that should come to an end. We have a fantastic opportunity to rein in on uh, uh, this partnership and ensure that if we want to bail out KQ, let us do it in a manner that is professional, that uh, takes KQ out of its financial troubles, but not to benefit certain individuals. Thank you. All right, let's just read uh, some of the reactions, unless uh, Dr. Shemachodo, you have something no, funny no, to I, say on this. We want to close I, this chapter. We yeah, want I, to, uh, I just wanted to add the ball in terms of making our airspace safe we need to do much more. Since Nairobi and Kenya, by extension, is becoming a regional hub, it's vital that we make it safe. But obviously, it's a question of when you have complex matters and you try to fix them uh, rather kijuakali, and I'm hoping we'll have opportunity to discuss issues also like the laptops and the names and yes, all yes, that yes. are being wrongly implemented without being well thought out. Thank you. Well, just, 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 yes, uh, just to say that um, I agree with the Morgani training that our pilots get and our engineers get is, is, is actually one of the best. Mm. So we have very, very good workers. And the organization actually called KQ can run very fairly, except now the management part. I also wanted to say that um, for, for Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, uh, they, they really need to, to, to um, weigh in on this matter also and say something, because uh, they, they have now been resourced mm. to be able to be an effective Yes, uh, uh, oversight body, and and for those of us who are in the committees of parliament, this is about the, the time when committees of parliament should really uh, stand firm and go professionally step by step to find out what happens to all those reports mm -hmm. that have not come out. It's a very complex process anyway. The one of investigating uh, crashes is very very complex because as you know, mm -hmm. Ayata is involved. You have all these um, insurance companies are involved, yes, and, and, and families are involved. So it's a bit yeah. complex. So it, it is it is a very interesting matter. Right. I just want the, also the, to the, the small comment. Please, I, I would like to add on to what my colleagues have said. Please, please. I, I, I still want to to insist that the experience I've had, and that is because I've, I've directly uh, been associated and uh, and affiliated with family members who have been in this industry. Um, actually, to me, I think we, we just need as a country to get to the bottom of the issues about the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Bottom line, we mm -hmm. must be able to have outfits which handle this matter professionally. Uh, we must be in a position to see whether we are actually operating within the international best practices. Mm -hmm. How many hours does a Kenyan pilot fly? Sure. How many hours does a flight person stay in the cabin? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the training, any Kenyan pilot will tell you that the training a Kenyan pilot gets is amongst the best in the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you notice, I don't know whether many would agree with me on this, many of the pilots that we used to train in Kenya are no longer being trained in Kenya. They're actually being trained by so, Ethiopia. Yeah. That, that's another reality. Or South Africa. Uh, yes, or South Africa. Why is that the case? So my argument is we need to really look at the industry. Not that the industry has failed, no. Simply that we expect the best. For the fact that when a flight goes down, you don't really expect anything out of that. So and uh, we fly these things. Thank you. So my argument is we need to go to the bottom of it and make sure we adopt the international best, best practice so that Kenya then is given uh, its position within the region that it's it's a country that, that is very successful within the hub. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let, let's just read uh, some of the reactions that are coming through also on our social media. We have Governor the Dreamer. <clears throat> By the way, I met him. Thank you, Governor the Dreamer, who supports AM Live also with streets. With his tweets, uh, Kenya Airways is the most expensive airline in Africa, he says, and they offer West, uh, they offer West customer service. Uh, majority of Kenyans rarely use KQ. They need to come up with strategic solutions. This is uh, the governor. Uh, KQ, uh, this is what Peter Fred 
Fred Ruori saying KQ has have outsourced everything. Start with CDL accompaniment for employing KQ staff, insert for drivers, B and J cleaning, creative cleaning, amicable transport, holiday and tour transport, trade winds, baggage handling, Eurocraft baggage handling, Swiss Sport Security, Seneca Security, the list goes on and on. Also, we have again you know, um, saying that uh, that the chairman is the same time that the chairman of uh, the Kenya Airport Authority is at the same time the CEO of CBA Bank. New info this morning for me. He lands. Also, Samuel Oruto says the aftermath. The aftermath, I should say, of the handshake when Raila was in the position he was a point of condemnation and is now in the support of the government. And yet the attitude is the same. Truly, Raila can't split himself into two uh, opposition. Uh, can come any persons? Well, I can't really decipher what uh, Oruru is saying this morning. So let me just jump to Dr. Jen Omwenge saying, nobody is ready to fight corruption in this country. It's just PR even from the executive. He says, Bora Uhai. <laughs> also, we have Aleki Washera saying, we will save our country because the rich class is looting time. Mm. When the Wananchi, when the Wananchi, Wanateseka, because we voted for them to loot and protect their properties, mm. Mali Awizi. Also, we have uh, Ricky Demo saying, this handshake looks fishy. In this regard, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mohoho is a friend to Raila. Who knows what happens at night? Raila could be speaking through proxies at night. Who knows? All Kenyans are known to do business in the darkness. These are uh, the comments of Wananchi, <laughs> not of uh, NMG. Also, we have um, Dr. Jen Omwenga saying, it's only God who can save this country from corruption. Given its magnitude currently, thanks to help defaulters, they are scapegoats. Right. Now, that one deviates. People will always take uh, <laughs> advantage. Also, we have Jen Ambuko saying, Galana Kulalu was was doomed to fail because the implementers gave a deaf ear to experts in agriculture. Mm. Instead, they listened to consultants with selfish interest. Matakeo in the Ohio, this is what Jen, she's saying. Mm. And uh, Langatki Prop, he says, this uh, part of disadvantages of handshake, if Honorable Raila Dinga was still in charge of position, something like JKA takeover by a national carrier, which has some individual interest, could not have come out. Right? So they keep on coming.